Hi guys, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we're going to continue our discussion about Mach number and specifically what we are going to be looking at is the relationship between area changes and also velocity. So before we study compressible flow, we are already very familiar with incompressible flow. So in incompressible flow, we know that when area increases, velocity will go down, right? And when area decreases, the velocity will go up. In this video, it's going to be quite interesting because at supersonic flow, which is Mach number greater than 1, you're going to see that when the area increase, velocity will also increase and when the area decrease, velocity will also decrease. Okay, so we are already very familiar with this equation which is m dot equal to rho times velocity times area. Okay, meaning that in steady flow, rho 1 times v1 times a1 equal to rho 2 times v2 times a2. And for incompressible flow, the density at point 1 will be similar with velocity at point 2, so I can cancel this out. And what's left is v1 a1 equal to v2 a2. So this is for incompressible flow. And it is very clear that in this relationship, that when velocity goes up, okay the area will go down so basically if you want to increase the velocity of a flow in pipe for example you're going to make the diameter of the pipe smaller right in that way you will get higher velocity at the same mass flow rate and for compressible flow let's take a look at the relationship so compressible flow if you have a pipe that's changing in area and now you have the inlet, okay, this is your control volume. So this is your inlet and this is your outlet. So for inlet, let's say that the density is rho, the velocity is V and the area is A, okay. But at the exit, then this is going to be rho plus D rho, V plus DV and area plus d area okay so everything has changed because this is compressible so rho will change slightly so that is d rho velocity will change slightly and area will also change slightly so now let's go back to this relationship and this is point one and this is point two okay if the equation says rho one v one a one equal to rho two v two a two now, I'm going to have rho times velocity times area, this is at point number 1, okay, equal to rho plus d rho times v plus dv times a plus dA. Alright, so this is at point 1, okay, and this is at point 2. Alright, and now let's see where this equation takes us. Let's try to solve the right hand side. Okay, this is obviously rho times v times a plus rho times v times dA plus rho times dv times a plus rho times dv times dA plus d rho times v times a plus d rho times v times d a plus rho times d v times a plus sorry this is d rho times d v times a plus d rho times d v times d a okay so as usual if you have two changes like dv times dA, you're going to cancel it out because the multiplication result of these two d's will be very small that you can neglect it. So you'll end up with a few equations. So this cannot be cancelled. This cannot be cancelled. This is staying. This can be cancelled. This is staying. And this can be cancelled. This can be cancelled. And this can also be cancelled. So you will end up with this is rho times velocity times area plus rho v d a plus rho a d v plus v a 
B row. Okay, and these two can be cancelled out. Okay, because you have row VA on the left and on the right. So you will end up with row VBA plus row ADV plus VAD row equal to zero. Okay, and if I divide everything with one over row VA, okay, let's see what happens. So this will be DA over A plus DV over V plus D rho over rho equal to zero. And we were saying before that we want to find the relationship between velocity and area, right? Okay, and now we have here area and we have velocity, but we also have row okay and let's see what we can do about this row so that we can obtain the relationship between velocity and area now let's go back to a concept that you have already learned before which is called Bernoulli equation and Bernoulli equation it says that p over rho g plus v square over 2g plus h equal to constant okay so if you have point 0.1 on the left the total of P over rho G plus V square over 2G plus H at 1 will equal to the total of that at 0.2. Alright, so now let's assume that the pipe is a horizontal pipe. So H will be eliminated. And I want P as the title. So this is going to be P plus rho V square over 2 equal to constant. Okay, can I do that? Alright, so now P is equal to C minus rho V square over 2. Right, let's carry on. And I want here, what I want here is dP over dV. So dP over dV equal to, now constant is now 0. So this is negative 2 rho V over 2. And you will end up with dP over dV equal to minus rho V. And if I move dv to the right, you will get dp equal to minus rho v dv. Okay, and if I want to divide everything with d rho, okay, and I want to divide everything with d rho, okay, d rho, so you will end up with dp over d rho equal to minus rho v dv over d rho. So here you need to be careful. So just make sure that you recognize well which one is p and which one is rho. Do not mix those two together. Okay, and dp over d rho is actually something that we have found before. Okay, let's take a look uh, where it is. Okay, and if you remember this, okay, C is actually square root of dp over d rho. Okay, so dp over d rho itself is actually C square. And what is C? C is the speed of sound. Alright, let's write it there. So this will be C square equal to minus rho over d rho times v dv. Okay, and we are also looking for the replacement of d rho over rho. Okay, and this is a suitable replacement to put here. Okay, so now we are looking for d rho over rho. So d rho, let's do this in black. Okay, so d rho over rho is equal to minus v dv over c square okay and this is quite an important relationship and i'm just going to write this equation again here at the bottom so da over a plus dv over v plus d rho over rho equal to zero and now i want to replace d rho over rho with this equation right and you will end up with da over a 
plus dv over v minus v dv over c square equal to 0. Okay, and what I want to do now is to have this equation and multiply this with v over v. Okay, you'll see later why. And this means I will end up with dA over A plus dV over V minus V square over C square dV over V. This is equal to zero. And the reason why I wanted to have here V over V is so that I can get V square over C square here. And if you remember, Mach number is equal to Velocity divided by speed of sound. So this is clearly m square, right? So this is clearly m square. And if I take a to the right and v to the left, I will end up with dv over v m square minus 1 equal to dA over a. Okay, and this is the important equation that we were looking for. Okay. And in discussing compressible flow, this relationship is very important. This relationship shows how area change with velocity or how velocity change with area. And now let's take a minute to understand what this equation tells you. Okay, let's have two cases, right? So this is, on the left is Mach number less than 1. This is Mach number greater than 1. Okay, so obviously this is subsonic flow. And this is clearly supersonic flow. Okay. And when Mach number is less than 1, okay, and you plug it here, okay, and you plug it here, right? Now, let's see. When Mach number is less than 1, you will have minus dV over V times something, right? Equal to dA over A. This means that when you increase the area, okay, the velocity will go down. Okay, typical, right? This is normal. So when you reduce the area, velocity will go up. This is quite normal, okay? We see this every day, okay? That is why we pinch the hose, right? So that we can water the plant further away. It's just to make the area smaller so that the velocity will go higher and the water can go further, right? And now, Let's see something a little bit different, which is when Mach number is greater than 1. Okay, so what happens when Mach number is greater than 1? Okay, so this here, this term will be positive. Alright, so dV over V multiply with whatever number it is equal to dA over A. Alright, and because both left and right hand side is positive, right? When area increase, right, the velocity will also increase. Now, if you think about it, this is quite counterintuitive, right? So when you have a diverging duct, right, you expect the velocity to be slower at the end, right? But if the Mach number is greater than 1, if the flow is supersonic, right, and you have the duct that is going larger and larger, the velocity will actually increase. Okay, now this I think is quite interesting and it is quite counterintuitive. And similarly, if the area goes down, the velocity will also goes down. Okay, and what is the implication of this? Now, let's say you want to increase the velocity from subsonic to supersonic. Okay, what do you do? Alright, so when the flow is subsonic, you know that to increase the velocity, you have to reduce the area. Okay, so what you do is you reduce the area. Okay, you reduce the area. If you keep reducing the area, the velocity will continue to increase, right? Until Mach number equal to 1. Okay? And then, to increase the Mach number further, let's say to increase it to Mach number 2, then this follows this relationship. Okay? You cannot continue to reduce the size of the pipe because the velocity will go down now. Right? Because the flow is now supersonic. So, what you do is, after the Mach number reaches 1 here, okay? You increase the flow area, okay? And in here, you will have Mach number greater than 1, okay? So, the flow is moving from left to right. Here is obviously Mach number less than 1, okay? 
and at the transition region okay in here okay at this region okay at this region the area change is actually zero isn't it okay because the area doesn't change anymore okay it goes from smallest to higher value of area so the transition is actually meaning that area change is zero so da here is zero okay now let's take a look at this equation what happens if da equal to zero okay you will end up with mark number square minus one equal to zero so mark number is actually one okay that is why mark number will only equal to one at the throat region okay this is what you call throat area throat area okay so supersonic flow can only occur when you have throat okay so the flow goes smaller and it goes bigger and this is the reason why supersonic flight okay the nozzle at the back of the flight is diverging right it's not converging okay it has to diverge because the velocity will continue to increase when the flow area is increasing okay so this is a new concept for you and i think this is all for today thank you very much and i'll talk to you soon bye